What's going on everybody? I'm Jeff Wall and this is Lingo Sports. Today we are going to be counting down one of my top five pet peeves, maybe even my biggest pet peeve of all in the sport of MMA, and that is instant rematches. One of my biggest issues with it, especially in title fights, is that it generally backs up the division, and you can think of a lot of different ways that that could be a problem. Of course, the simple fact that uh, the loser generally gets beaten up on most of the time, and sometimes physically damaged, and even worse, mentally, which can completely ruin a fighter's career. So if you set them up in an instant rematch, it tends to only get worse for that fighter. And it's terrible when a fighter has great potential, like some of the ones we're going to be talking about. If you like this video, well, it's simple. Give it a like. That really helps us out. Sharing it around with other MMA fans would be great as well so they know where to get the best MMA content. And of course, subscribe to Lingo Sports to get more videos and never, ever, ever have to wait for a single one of them. Now let's get things started with Joanna Janjacek versus Rose Namajunas. In the first bout with the now two former strawweight queens, Joanna Champion was defeated, knocked out for the first time in her MMA career. Rose wasted no time dropping Ioana twice in what would be a vicious, vicious finish. And it was not like some fluke KO, no. Sure, the fight was short-lived, but Ioana had no chance to get into the fight. And Nama Yunus just tore right through her. Yes, Ioana Violence was the most decorated champion in the division's history, and arguably at the time the most decorated in terms of resume in women's MMA. I would even make that argument to be completely honest with you, but it's not like Jan Jacek had a reign as long as Aldo, Demetrius Johnson's, GSP, Jones, or Silva, and she was beaten soundly. If you're a UFC matchmaker, why not allow Jan Jacek to get back into the mix, fix any issues she might have had, get a win, and ensure her confidence hasn't fallen to bits before she fights someone who just absolutely wrecked her? Nope. Instead of doing that and potentially making the rematch a more competitive one, Joanna got an instant rematch. She did make some improvements, but was definitely more gun shy than usual. Rose would take a fairly easy five round decision over her, and Janjacek has never really truly been the same since. Benson Henderson and Frankie Edgar are two fighters that definitely know rematches pretty well. But in this case, this one was just very, very one-sided. Frankie Edgar. Sometimes this dude just can't catch a break. This guy fought three of the exact same opponents in six straight fights, each one of them an instant rematch. Coming off two legendary battles with rival Gray Maynard where his size disadvantage was pushed to the brink. Then, luckily, he got an even bigger, stronger, more durable, and weird fighter in Batson Henderson. Bendo owned Edgar in their first fight, and just after two successful title defenses, Edgar was granted an instant rematch. And while things did get a little bit better, Edgar lost and was essentially forced down to 145 pounds, where, let's just say, things didn't exactly get any easier. Like I just mentioned, Frankie Edgar has seen a lot of rematches in his career, so it should be no surprise that he's actually appearing twice, two straight times on this countdown with his rematch versus Frankie Edgar for the lightweight title. BJ Penn at the time was considered to be the best lightweight to ever walk the face of the earth. Penn returned to the UFC after the folding of the 155 pound division. He returned to go up to welterweight a few times, but with no success. Finally, he dropped down to his more natural weight class and turned into the destroyer of men we all knew he could be. Baby J was unmatched. Then, the little known Frankie Edgar was up next for the slaughter. Only thing was, Edgar is not about that life. He shocked the world, defeating Penn in Abu Dhabi. Some noted Penn didn't look like himself, that he may have been sick or that the heat got to him. Whatever. But please, just tell me how that somehow warrants an instant rematch? Seriously? Great fighter has an off night so he gets a mulligan? Oh, and just before you do, don't even try to make the argument that that fight was competitive. You have five rounds of evidence to tell you that it was anything but. You know what sure as hell was not competitive? The instant rematch. 
This one was even worse. Penn looked nothing like his former self. Edgar looked even better. Just another great addition to the long list of why instant rematches make no fucking sense. Nate Diaz went from obscure middling lightweight to one of the biggest stars in the sport when he beat Conor McGregor at 170 pounds. But then they had an instant rematch that absolutely never needed to take place. This bout is the only one on the list with no title on the line. And for good reason, it didn't deserve one. A side note for the casuals who don't want to check their history, Nate Diaz, since the loss to Benson Henderson, has been anything but a title contender. Spotty, at best, was his record. Luckily for him, he got a favorable matchup with Michael Johnson and looked really, really good. He called out McGregor in the speech that I never, ever want to hear again thanks to social media pages like SportsCenter and ESPN MMA. Honestly, how many more times are you going to post that? Anyway, Nate stepped in as a replacement for RDA who had to pull out of his fight due to a foot injury. McGregor came in as a strong favorite as he does, and for the first half of the fight was dominant. But the Irishman quickly gassed, got whooped, and subbed quickly. And of all people, Nate Diaz was the one to hand Conor McGregor his first loss in the UFC. Now, I understand there was a ton of people who wanted to see the rematch here. I know, I get it. And because of the style that makes the matchup so competitive, I was actually down to see a rematch down the road. But you know what I love in my rivalries? Is a story, plot building, suspense. I want to see McGregor get back on the horse, prove that he can at least make the fight more competitive with the win. Diaz get another win to prove his dominance was no fluke. Cause otherwise, it's just like hiding him. This way, you're not bored of the matchup, it doesn't feel like you're watching the same fight twice, and you actually have a reason to see the two meet again. But no, that's not how MMA goes, unfortunately. The consensus is that Jose Aldo and Max Holloway are the two best featherweights to ever walk the face of the earth. But you only had to see their first fight to predict what might have happened in an instant rematch, and boy, oh boy, did this one get ugly. The meeting of the two best featherweights of all time. Holloway came in on his legendary win streak. Aldo on the comeback, facing the toughest test to date to retain his new belt. In his home country of Brazil, he almost did that. Aldo came on strong and in a close first round where he rattled blessed. But after that, the tide closed in on Aldo. Holloway made some adjustments and with his durability, he was able to take the power of Aldo head on. And with his pace, he would drown the legend. With a damaging TKO like that and being so far removed from his long time reign as the king of the division, it should maybe make you think of a fighter's long-term health and career. Yes, I know fighters sign on the dotted line, but these athletes will push themselves to the impossible. They want revenge for their losses, and of course, more importantly, above all, they have to feed their family. The second fight was much more one-sided. Holloway was at his peak, and Aldo was on a very deep decline. So, if you're subscribed to Lingo Sports, you're gonna know that this fight right here hasn't happened because you'll be seeing this as a premiere right in the morning on YouTube when the video is posted at first. But I just thought that this rematch was so, so bad that it deserved a spot on this list in some way, shape, or form. So, we all know why this one is being made again, right? Mr. UFC company man wants to avenge his loss and end his career on a high with the heavyweight belt. It's nice to know the UFC will reward some of their faithful employees, but I want you to ask yourselves, what in the fuck do you think is going to happen here? Stipe DC2 was close enough through most of the fight, but DC was fading and the fight was starting to turn in Miocic's favor. Stone Cold Stipe found a massive chink in the armor of DC, in that he has no striking defense, like at all. DC handled the liver shots of Stipe bad. Now that's one thing, but allowing that to happen with almost 
no setup or the exact same setup, that is just horrible. DC, who comes from <clears throat> the American Kickboxing Academy, had no answer at all for a body shot. Yeah, you might want to change your name, guys. This put Cormier in a bad spot and caused him to take unprotected shots to his completely worn out shin. So I'm going to ask you guys again, what the fuck do you think is going to happen here? Topping this list is a fight that pretty much ended a very promising career or at least severely damaged it in Cody Garbrandt when he took on TJ Dillashaw again after he was brutally knocked out. TJ Dillashaw and Cody Garbrandt had a serious rivalry stemming back to TJ leaving Alpha Male with Dwayne Ludwig. The trash talk was intense and it was endless. TJ was the former champ at this point, Cody was undefeated and just dismantled Dominic Cruz who looked practically unbeatable at times. The fight lived up to the billing for sure. It was close, both fighters had their moments with knockdowns and big momentum shifts. But eventually, it was Garbrandt who would earn his first loss by TKO. Once again, we have a fighter who has been decisively beaten, his chin cracked, and with the result of the second fight, you might even say he lost his confidence, and with it, his composure. Garbrandt didn't look nearly as good. The fight would end with him throwing successive right hand bombs over and over as he was avoided and cracked over and over. It was clear at this moment in time, TJ had his number. Garbrandt was still young and had a lot of time to get better from the loss and actually make the fight more competitive if he was given more time to reevaluate. Not the case though. He would go on to do the exact same thing with Pedro Munoz getting KO'd the exact same way three straight times. There's no telling the damage that has been done to his chin at this point. Another facet to this one is the generation of the bantamweight bangers. There was plenty of deserving contenders. A new, refreshing matchup for Dillashaw like Jimmy Rivera, Rafael Asunso, Marlon Moraes, Aljamain Sterling, John Lineker, and for all intents and purposes, Dominic Cruz. There was just no reason for this one. I hope this video really lays out for you why instant rematches are just absolutely horrible for the sport. I think we've given some great reasons and some great examples along the way, but if you disagree, let us know in the comments below or give your worst instant rematches of all time. And don't forget to subscribe to Lingo Sports for more videos. Give this video a like, give it a share as well, and follow us on Instagram for more great content. Take care.